Hello and welcome everybody to Ilana's Labs. Today, we're going to be showing you how you can use OpenCV's inRange function. Now, you can use the inRange function in very, very creative ways. One of the more common ways it's used is when you're doing masking, and we'll cover what masking is, uh, is in a future video. Uh, for now, we'll just cover how to use the inRange function. Now, the picture we're going to be using is that of this traffic light over here, and it's actually a very colorful image with very very distinct colors uh, but we're first going to explore how we can you know use in range on a grayscale picture because it's a bit easy to explain it and if you do understand how it works on a grayscale grayscale picture it's easier to graduate to a color picture so for cv2 dot in range there are a couple of functions there are a couple of sorry inputs we're going to pass in it's the picture the lower bound and the upper bound now what is lower bound and upper bound? Let's say the objective we want to do over here is we want to capture all the bright areas of the picture. So on a grayscale, obviously uh, zero stands for black and 255 stands for pure white. Now there's going to be um, a sort of uh, range from zero to 255. So the pixel values are going to be, well, probably 255 in a place like that and zero over here, but these other ones are going to be somewhere in the middle. So when we define this range, and actually let's call it lower and upper threshold. So lower threshold, you know what, just so that we can keep the show, let's just call it lower and upper. What we want to do is we want to define that range. So let's call the lower, uh, let's call it 150 and let's call the upper 254. And now we will pass in this picture, the lower threshold and the upper threshold. And like I said, we just want to capture the bright areas of this picture falling between the lower and upper threshold. And then let's see what this picture looks like. Now I'm going to use CMAP gray. I'm going to explain why we're going to do that in a little bit. Now you can see it's captured the bright areas between 150 and 254, but it hasn't captured, say, some of these areas over here, which, you know, it, those thresholds define what you classify as bright. So if I were to lower that threshold, we should see more of this picture appear over here. And there you go. Now you get bits and pieces of this picture, uh, of, of this picture appearing over here. Now, the reason we used uh, the grayscale is quite simply because if you look at the output of this, well, you see a whole bunch of zeros, but that's actually more than zeros in there. So let me type np.unique. So as you can see, this entire, the, what, what this thing returns is full of zeros and 255s. So if your pixel had a value, between 100 and 254, i.e. it is in range, the in range function would return a 255, which on a grayscale is a white. Else, it will return a zero, i.e. black. So displaying this in a grayscale uh, gray picture is actually quite useful for visualizing the result. Okay, so now uh, hopefully you understand how this thing works on a grayscale picture. We're now gonna graduate to a colored picture. So. Let's read this thing in as a colored picture. Just copy all this from here. Let's convert the color. And let's display it. Right, so let's say the objective we want to achieve now is to capture the red parts of this picture. Now, red, obviously pure, pure red is uh, on a, on a RGB picture is going to be 255, zero, zero. Now, there are definitely different variations of red here. So we need to kind of understand the range of reds there are. Now, the easiest way to do this is to actually activate Matplotlib's QT and check out what those ranges of red are.
So if we zoom in to the right over here, you can see that, and especially if you look at this part of the screen, you will see that you get somewhere over here, well, very, very red. You get 255, 622. Over here, it's actually not really red. I mean, if you were to see that image in isolation, you'd probably call it black. Uh, so I don't think that's a really, really good place to look at. But anyway, so here's the thing. You, you got all kinds of variations of red here, isn't it? You got something that looks very red, you got something that looks black, and you got something that actually looks pretty darn white. So let's actually uh, open a notepad and take down a few notes, uh, a few samples of the different variations of red that we see over here. So if I were to pick on that point over there, it's 255, well, 254, 00, 254, 00. If I were to pick one of these spots that are really, really white, like that is, that's white. Like if you were to see that in isolation, you'd call that white. What's that? That's 253, 239, 212. I hope I can remember those numbers. Nope, I can't remember those numbers. Terrible short term memory. 255, 248, 230. Yeah, close enough. And let's pick one of the darker areas. So what's that? 206.023. 206.023. So you can see over here that the red is pretty dominant in all of this. But when you get into the super bright areas, you actually see uh, really high values in the other color channels too. So let me just copy this over to our notebook. And I'm going to call this samples. And uh, I'm going to convert this to a markdown just so that this isn't code that runs. Okay, so let's actually play around with the thresholds just a little bit since we got a bit of an idea of what ranges of red that we have on that picture. So let's set lower to what's the lowest one over here? I would say it is the 206. 023 set the upper threshold to uh, 255 248 to 31 so red selection let's call it red selection is oh and by the way make sure that these are numpy arrays and now let's see what this looks like now remember the output of this is going to be either 0 or 225, so we're actually going to check this out. Uh, well, we're going to visualize this on a grayscale picture. Oh, what did I do? Ah. Oh, I forgot to uh, switch this one off. Okay, so we've caught quite a bit of the red. Uh, so actually, let me display the original image right below this thing. So, um, oh, I should have made a copy of this. All right, that's fine. We'll just call it another variable for now. Okay, so you got a lot of red over here and you can see most of it is appearing. So it is detecting red, but it's also detecting a lot of yellow and actually a bit of the green stuff too. So let's uh, let's try get rid of these green stuff because we don't want it detecting it because uh, we're trying to find the red stuff, aren't we? So if you look at our range, especially the upper part of this range, uh, we are actually letting it capture quite a bit of green. So essentially what we're saying is anything uh, in the green channel that's between 0 and 248, you are A-OK -okay to display that stuff. So what I'm going to experiment with is I'm actually going to reduce that a little bit. Uh, let's take it down to, uh, I don't know, 100 and see what we get. Oh, as you can see, that actually took down all of that. Now, you might have noticed, let's go back. I think, what was this? This was 248 or something like that. You notice that this that's a yellow blob over here. It's also detected some yellow. So let's actually just crank this down a little so that we can maybe retain some of those things. So now, why do we have these yellow things over here? Now, if you were to go to an RGB slider, 
and you wanted to manufacture the color yellow, you'd essentially crank up the red and you would crank up the green. If you go back to our notebook, we can see that we allow quite a bit of leeway for yellow over here. Now, the best way to sort of tune that out is to do what we did previously, which is to give a lower range of that thing and hit shift enter. And you can see we're capturing just the red stuff over here. So that's how we use CB2's in range function. Uh, as you can see, there is a bit of experimentation that needs to go on. Uh, this is part of the activity you'd want to go through if you're doing like some kind of uh, traffic light classification exercise. And it's a, it, it's a part of you do this and then you do some masking and you do a whole bunch of other things too. Uh, but anyway, um, I hope you guys got the idea of how to use in range from here. Uh, obviously, make sure that you understand the grayscale bit. Play around with this spot over here before you go down to the color image. Also, try to figure out how you can get the yellow parts and the green parts. And I will leave that exercise up to you. Obviously, if you have any questions, write it in the comment section below and I will get back to you. So if you got some good value out of this and you think this was really useful, smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, and also hit the notify, notify notification, the notify button, you know, the little bell. And um, in that way, whenever I release a new video, it will pop up on your radar. All right, people, have a good one.